We uh, apparently, the, the schedule is getting a little messed up, so I offered to talk for a little bit, and then we figured out what I was going to talk about. So we realized, actually, that we were missing something. There was no talk about what was in 2.3. In case anyone's not aware, we had a release recently <laughs> that took a while to get to. If you run Security Onion, it'll be in there soon. It's my fault that it's not there yet. Literally, it's actually my fault. I told Doug I didn't like his scripts enough. Sorry, Doug. <laughs> I had already started rewriting them, though. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, I thought it'd be fun to kind of talk about stuff that's new in 2.3, and feel free to, to, to comment on it or whatever, because this is obviously a very informal talk. I just prepared for it about 20 minutes ago. So in terms of, um, well, I guess I should start. We, we seem to have fallen into kind of this TikTok release cycle. It, it, we did not do it deliberately at all. It just happened. Um, the 2.0 release he was a huge tick. And then 2.1, people just updated. There were like no changes or anything. But it was a bunch of bug fixes and performance improvements and stuff like that. 2.2 broke everything in Security Onion again. And then 2.3 is kind of bad. We broke stuff in Security Onion again, but it's, it's much less minor. So we seem to be, I, my, my early guess, because I don't know, we just started kind of on the 2.4 development cycle. My guess is that it's going to be really a, a really big change to what you're doing. And hopefully you guys don't know, notice it that much, but it is probably going to be uh, a, some big changes brought to Bro. Um, so anyway, some of the stuff in 2.3, there's a radius analyzer that Vlad Grigorescu wrote. That's kind of cool because suddenly now you can stick it in front of a radius server and you have radius logs, uh, which is much easier frequently, it seems, than getting logs from a radius server. <laughs> um, uh, and, and again, if you have traffic, Vlad, there's a test for that, right? You can look and actually, in our test suite, you can see what the log looks like. And there, there's scripts for it and stuff, uh, mostly just the, uh, the base analysis scripts that generate the logs. Um, there were some improvements in the PF ring handling, that, that new PF ring ZC thing, the, the zero copy thing that they added, that's actually supported in 2.3, uh, along with PF ring, the uh, DNA cluster stuff. Um, that, that's all supported. If you're, if you're running the, the PF, there's that thing, that tool called PF DNA cluster master, because I know some of you run PF ring, you're probably using the DNA stuff. Uh, if you use the PF DNA cluster master, you name your interface DNA cluster colon, or someone that does this, actually, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the interface name, you use DNA cluster colon like 21, whatever your dash C argument is when you run PF DNA cluster master. But anyway, the same load balancing tool they have for the ZC, you name your interface ZC colon and then whatever your cluster ID is, and, and that will actually make it work and sniff correctly. So anyway. PF ring, there's better support there. Um, I'm going to not go into much detail on these because I don't want to trample on stuff other people are doing, but there's uh, an SNMP analyzer that um, John Suick wrote that is neat. The, um, the default logs that get output from it do not do the analyzer justice because um, I spent a really long time trying to figure out what, what do you log for SNMP. And, it's, it's a very, very high level overview right now. There's a couple of OIDs that we've picked that if those happen to show up, and it's like the real, the really common ones that are like, what's the, the name of the system or something like, or, and then there's another one that I'm blanking on what it is right now, but those get logged. But it tries to generally convey, there were, something came across and it did lookups for this many OIDs. So you can kind of get a feel you know, it actually, I was supposed to change this before the release, but didn't do it. Um, it logs the uh, community string that's used, so. Hopefully no one treats those like passwords, because some people do. I would prefer that. It, it does. I was supposed to change it, but I didn't. Anyway, hopefully many of the community strings you see are public, because uh, <laughs> they're, not, they're not private. Um, but anyway, so there's the SNMP analyzer, and it, it's, it's a pretty complete analyzer. I mean, it, it really digs as far into the protocol as I think almost everyone's going to want. And there was actually a question on the mailing list the other day about SNMP, and there definitely could be a script written to do whatever was asked for by whoever asked that. Um, there, it, there were a bunch of changes to SSL. 
that I won't go into because they've gone into in a separate talk by Johanna. And they are, um, they add a lot of kind of neat functionality. One of the things that ended up with is uh, the ability to do heart bleed detection, which is kind of cool. It took a little bit longer for other community than other communities did, I think, to get to the heart bleed detection stuff, but it, it's implemented in a really neat way in Bro, I think. Part of, part of the SSL changes, though, we're actually taking the X509 analyzer and breaking that out into a file analyzer, which is cool because suddenly this code that was in the SSL analyzer is now broken out and reusable. If you, and I don't know why, I don't know what someone would use this for, but it is an option. If, um, let's say, let's say you, you have a, a a directory of files and you, you, there are, you know that they're certificates and you're just sort of dropping them there. You can actually have Bro watch that directory on disk, pick up the certificates put in there and you can log, you'll get like the X509 log that's in 2.3, you'll get that based off the files out off of disk. So it, it brings some really kind of neat functionality. That, that I, I think it's gonna be a while before anyone really takes advantage of that and uses it, but it's there now. Uh, there's also G GRE decapsulation. So now if you have GRE tunnels on your network, the GRE, does it, okay, someone's gonna be able to answer this. Does GRE do encryption? No. Then you will always be able to decapsulate it, I guess. Um, so yeah, if there are GRE tunnels on your network, they will show up in tunnels.log. It will automatically decapsulate them, pass them back in. So if, if there's HTTP going on over GRE, it will fully dig down and analyze that, uh, just, just like anything else. One of my super favorite things that no one probably in the room really cares about is we removed libmagic. Bro does not use libmagic anymore. <laughs> it's, not a, uh, it's not a dependency, it's not used, there's no way to use it unless you add it back in. Uh, John Suick did some heavy lifting and he made it so we actually use signatures now in Bro to do file type detection. Um, so anyway, libmagic, it was nice. It, that was one of the places that caused a lot of contention. People would go to build Bro, and they'd be like, oh, I have the wrong version of things, and something doesn't work. And I, I mean, it, we had tried to kind of solve the problem. Uh, one, of, one of the problems there, actually, is um, FreeBSD. I need to step, I keep thinking, I need to step back farther. The problem is that libmagic is not a library. It's an API. There are a bunch of different versions of the database, there are different versions of the library, there, there are different projects, totally separate. People would uh, run on FreeBSD and Windows executables would get identified as the string that it would return would not be application x dos exec, it would be something totally different. So you can't even write a script to deal with that. In 2.2 we had actually gone and included the libmagic database that we said, this is the one we're using. So we sort of solved that problem, but then even threw that out for 2.3 and have just gone now to, uh, to doing, Bro itself is doing the libmagic activity, but directly in Bro. Um, one of the other features that, that is kind of neat is um, start TLS support is now in um, a, a POP3 and SMTP. So if you have protocol, if you have a connection that got upgraded, previously, so there's an SMTP connection that happens, it does start TLS, and suddenly it upgrades to a different protocol, you would see nothing. Your log would say the last command was start TLS, and there'd be nothing else. But now what it actually does is the analyzer hands off to the SSL analyzer at that point, so it'll do all the certificate analysis, and it'll do all of that stuff, and you'll see that, that it was an upgraded connection in your, uh, in your SMTP log. So it's, it's doing what you would hope it does. I mean, it's kind of the right thing to do. If the protocol changes, you need to change along with it. Um, that we, we added JSON logging. There is actually a switch, and this is not, we found out just a few minutes ago, it's not even in the release notes. Or it's, it's in the release notes, it's not in the new features section. There's a switch you flip, <laughs> and all your logs turn into JSON. I don't recommend it, but people seem to want it, and we refactored some stuff that, that I broke, and we had a really broken master for two weeks. <laughs> it's my fault, but um, we, uh, it, it, things were refactored, so it was really easy, and people wanted it sometimes, so we added that. You can also do log filters and say, I just want this log as JSON. So it, it's not something that is like globally on or globally off. 
you can sort of specify which ones you want. Or if anyone's familiar with like using logging filters, you could take certain logs, direct them off to a different file, and have those one, just those ones as JSON. So you don't even have to say like, you know, all my HTTP logs are JSON. Not, I really don't know why anyone would want that. Um, so I talked about the heart bleed detector. So one of the things, we, I, I'll go really quickly through uh, little bugs that were fixed, just in case anyone ran into these, we could talk about them a little bit. Um, bloom filters are not broken anymore. So anyone that had noticed that bloom filters are broken, apparently Anthony noticed that bloom filters are broken. Were, bro were past tense, were. Uh, they're not broken anymore, I, we don't think, right? It's hard to validate it, it's very mathy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> as far as we can tell, they seem to be less broken. That's probably right. Um, so that's good. <laughs> uh, one of the really big changes was we, we identified at some point that the way the file analysis framework worked that was introduced in 2.2, right? Okay, I heard a few people say yes. So the file analysis framework was actually implemented in not the best way internally. Um, from a programming perspective, it was implemented really well, but it was more of, um, it was just inefficient. So there were some changes done and refactoring done that John Suig did again, because whenever there's heavy lifting done, it seems to be John <laughs> these days. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so the file analysis performance, we actually had some performance graphs that uh, Justin Azoff had done. It was like, here was performance, and then we fixed the, uh, the, the way the file analysis handling worked, and suddenly the perform this is good, by the way. So the per it, went, it ran faster uh, which it, to, to go over the same packets, which was good. Uh, the SMTP analyzer, I shouldn't have even brought that up. The SMTP analyzer had some bug fix that Robin did that I actually don't know. Um, there was a sum stats fix on big clusters, sum stats. Probably no one knew this, but we found out while the paper was being written, is that right? Like, the sum stats bug that, yeah, okay, it was, it was broken pretty badly on some clusters where certain results wouldn't actually get finished. Um, but uh, we, we did some changes to how sum stats aggregation is done when it's pulling, if you're running a big cluster and it's pulling the data back and aggregating it um, there were some changes in how that handling was done, so hopefully it'll be much, much more reliable now than it was. Uh, this one nailed a few people after the 2.2 uh, release came out, where if you happen to have a lot of intelligence and you're loading it through that read files thing, I see a few people smiling that must have run into this. Did you, did you run into this problem? Okay, well, there was a memory leak where if people, like, every five minutes would go and update their intelligence file and bro would read it in, you would leak a lot of memory for every single, intelli every single bit of intelligence. There were misunderstand. I abused the feature again. That's what it was, right? I mean, I, 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 there was misunderstandings between how things are supposed to work. Anyway, there, there was a leak, and it was an actual memory leak, but... This was, this was where we suddenly were like, maybe we should do a point release. And they were like, I'm pretty sure we're really close to a new release. And then five months later, we got the release out. So sorry about that. That was kind of our fault. But it didn't seem to impact many people. We only had reports from like two people. Because if you would like update your Intel data like once a day or once every hour, most people run Bro with so much memory overhead that it wouldn't really cause any impact. Because they would like restart or something before it would have an impact. Uh, there was actually something that I took notes on wrong. Um, TCP reassembly was actually really heavily reworked. This is sort of a hidden feature that, that, that happened. It was re reworked really heavily because it used, uh, I might get it wrong, the state tracking in the way that, that it tracked progression through TCP flows used 32-bit integers, which had some workarounds in place that made it okay, but Anyway, it uses 64-bit integers internally now for doing state tracking, and I just kept getting the feeling that was going to bite us later on where someone was going to have trouble, but it, the reassembly actually works differently now. And uh, again, I bet no one can guess who rewrote that. <laughs> it was John. <laughs> um, so I wanted to, I'll go ahead and wrap up really early. I wasn't supposed to start until now, but I'll, I'll take questions or whatever about any issues anyone's run into with 2.3. Um, 
for all of our projects, so Coverity has nicely allowed us to participate in their open source scanning program that they give to open source projects. Um, so we have, we submit builds, whenever there's something that get merged, gets merged into master, we submit builds to Coverity automatically. And they tell us if there are bugs. <laughs> and uh, at least that they, that they can detect. And across all of our projects that are being submitted, which I think is all the stuff written in C and C++, uh, we have a defect rating <clears throat> for all of those right now at 0.15. What that means is there are 0.15, but according to, to their measurements, there are 0.15 bugs in every thousand lines of code, which is pretty good. I mean, that's what's that like? It, it's over 10,000 lines of code before there's a bug, so I, I think that's pretty good. On average, I think for open source software, it's like seven. And ours, forget where it started, it might have been 11 or 12 or 70. <laughs> it may have been 70, but it was a lot of, there were a lot of false positives and things in it that, that didn't make sense. But if we actually step back and just look at Bro, and, and not all of them in aggregate, the, uh, the defect rating for Bro is um, 0.13. So there's 0.13 bugs for every thousand lines of code, according to Coverity's measurements. So, um, so that's, that's pretty exciting. The, the graph for that one is, again, uh, another, and this was a lot of John again. <laughs> it's a lot of this, and then, it dropped down, and the graphs they show now are just almost flat right at, at the bottom. The, the stuff that's left is like very, very minor stuff, like code paths that never even get hit and stuff like that. Um, I will say, though, if anyone from Coverity ends up watching this video, this tool is great, and it is actually the, the bro cut rewrite. It identified several bugs in that like immediately when, uh, when things happened, and I think they were legitimate bugs, right? They were mishandling memory or something. Um, so, it, well, that's really all I have for the stuff, the retrospective about 2.3, the accidental thing that we left out but now added back because the schedule got messed up. Are there questions about 2.3 or do you want to, is there, is it broken horribly for anyone or, it's probably not much comment. There weren't, from a user's perspective, it wasn't massive changes except for the excitement of new logs. It's like, yes, Vlad. The what? Oh, it was only two. It, the initial defect rate was apparently 2.1. I thought it was a lot higher than that. No, I'm thinking of something else. I don't know. I don't know. But that's cool. That, I, that's even not too bad. I mean, it's. I'd much rather have 0.13, but I guess 2.1 is not horrible. So, any other any other questions or? I don't want to talk about too much stuff because we talk about stuff coming up later. That's where all the exciting stuff is. That's where all the. Yeah. How, how about bro control script? I'm sorry, what? Bro control script. Bro. Bro control script. Uh, the one uh, that you use to restart. Your accent. Bro yeah. control script. Yeah. Bro control script. What is that? It, what, what's the question, though? Uh, has it been fixed recently? Because I had a lot of trouble restarting the bro cluster with this script. Is. Is it working better now? Yeah. There was work on, where is, yeah, uh, so I was trying to restart bro with the bro ctr script, and I've been running into troubles when some of the processes were not killed at all, and left over, or from the other point of view, uh, all the processes were killed, but the script was hanging somewhere. And it was waiting on something. Like the log was held somewhere, yeah. so the script would never end. So I ended up doing something like starting the script in, in the background and having a front-end process watching the back-end process and killing it in the loop. So there was, uh, Daniel, this was really you, right? I mean, you, I know you went through and fixed tons of these little issues that no one had been picking up, and you went through and fixed a lot of those. Yes, so I totally missed that. Daniel uh, Thayer at NCSA, he actually went through and improved the reliability. Was that when the test suite got added, too, was this release? Yeah? 
There is a test suite for Bro Control now that Daniel Thayer did. So yeah, the, uh, Bro Control is getting a lot of attention right now, and I don't want to talk anymore about it because that's coming up at a different time. But um, but yeah, so I'm glad to hear that the result of that work was good. I mean, <laughs> there you go, validation. <laughs> did it? Okay, actually, yeah, go ahead. Well, really quick, while you're walking up though, did anyone? Does anyone else have a better time with Bro Control with two three? Is that just Michael or other people have, is Bro Control better with 2.3? Cron thing fixed now. Or Cron would restart it when you failed to stop using Bro Control. So that's still in progress. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's some things that I, just, I don't know the answer to. Uh, yeah. How many lines of code is Bro? Vlad, how many like lines of code is Bro? Multiply by 0.5 and you know how busy John's going to be over the next couple of months. How many lines does Coverity say bro is? Uh, 350,000. But that's also not counting the bro scripts, which it, without the bros, which is probably, I think, 10,000 or so, <coughs> something like that. But um, yeah, it's sort of uh, Perl without any Perl scripts is not very helpful. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, they, they really depend on each other. But it's. I, what I feel like, though, is for a system that does as much of, as it is, it, it's a surprisingly small number of lines of code. I mean, 350,000 seems like a very manageable number. It used to be bigger, too. And it actually removed some stuff, which had, had been in there for a long time, and uh, I don't know what it was doing. Yeah, so it's a I, I think the line count used to be four or, 400, four or 450,000. I think so. I don't know, but I mean, other stuff So I guess we're still off schedule, but slightly less off schedule than we would have been. <laughs> I talked too fast, and I should have let that go a little longer.